Sorry I didn't make any tuna or egg salad. Yeah, that stuff though is delicious, don't you? You can have a spoonful of that for breakfast. Put an egg on it or something. What? The stuff that's in that thing right there. In that the bowl of that. The container? Yeah. You ate some of that? Yeah, I, I, I picked on some of that. It's delicious. The fajita stuff? Yeah, the, yeah, fajita stuff is good. Enjoy some of that. Don't don't forget to fail to enjoy some of that. I'm trying to do that Jack Harris weird thing. I don't know what he's saying. Right? Yes. Good. Where are you going? <laughs> he's running. I don't blame him. see he's running. <laughs> Well, good morning. Good morning. It's another it's another lovely Monday morning. It's a pleasure to be with y'all uh, here on Facebook and there out there on YouTube. Uh, thank, good morning. Thank you. Thank you again um, for all your. Um, it, it's it's been a, it's been a good month so far, uh, especially for uh, you know, you know what, us YouTube you know, YouTuber folks. Uh, we've got um, and people on Facebook that went and subscribed on YouTube. Um, we are we have ten subscriptions this month, and it's only the seventeenth. Thank you so much. Thank you very that much. Means, that means a lot. We have reached the first. We have reached the first milestone, and you know how milestones go. Once you get the set, first one, then momentum builds, and the other ones end up being a little easier. Um, this morning, we want to talk about something that is a, uh, for a lot of people, is a. Uh, I don't know. It's a. It can be a stumbling block. It can be uh, a big part of their married relationship. Or sometimes not marriage relationship. People have children. Yes. Um, if they're if they're, if, if they're either either in cohabitation or they are co-parenting, that's the new phrase. Yeah. That means that you get pregnant by somebody you're not married to, but you both decide responsibly that you're going to co-parent. Or from a divorce, you know, you have kids. There's all sorts of, you know, and, and, all sorts of scenarios. Yeah, now. So, so so you're talking about blended families and all sorts of things where parenting becomes a ma a major part. Cause no matter. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries, I got you. I got you. Um, but where, where parenting becomes a major part of the relationship, it's unavoidable. We like, you know, we did a video a, a, a couple of months ago that, that said that the um, relationship is more important than the, than the children, and it is. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I entitled the um, the Facebook broadcast the second most important job that you have um, in your relationship. Um, the first is this this job, making sure this relationship works, and then the second part, making sure that you are that, that your parenting relationships work, because that can be tricky. And especially in all the scenarios that we just talked about, it can be very tricky uh, when you talk about blended, especially when you talk about blended families and and, and co-parenting situations where the you know where the child stays with the dad um, on a couple of days and then the mom a couple of days on the weekend and, and however. Because it can end up with four people parenting one child. Yeah, and that can get very very com very complicated. Um, and so we so w when we're talking about this. We can't talk about everybody's personal situation because a lot of y'all got some crazy madness going on. <laughs> you just do. You got it's some crazy. You got is. some. Y'all got some crazy madness going on, and you know you do. So I, you know, I, I, I ain't yelling at you. I, ain't, I, I ain't, you know, I ain't dogging you out. But we're you know not you do. preaching. But you know that you do. <laughs> Come on. We're just. I'm just. Sa I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't. I'm just saying. Um, so. We're going to talk about it in stages because it does come in stages. Because parent, because parenting changes as the, as two dynamics happen, as the child gets older, and the and the adult gets older. And the adult gets older. <laughs> because things change, understandings in the in in the, in the child change, and expectations in the adult changes. Um, so when you have little kids. And what's one of the biggest things we see that, that, we, that we talk about in this house all the time, where people have children in places, I don't know, credit unions, banks, grocery stores, uh, doctor's offices, uh, kids were running around in the, I had some blood, when I had blood work done, running around in the lab, um, 
And you and and, and now as you get, especially as we get older, we wonder, where is your mom? <laughs> where is your parent? Where is your mom? Why are you running? And and it to me, not that the child is misbehaving, but I'm worried about the safety of the child. I think the child is misbehaving. And <laughs> yeah, they, they're because I'm a little older. They're misbehaving, <laughs> but the safety of the child. I mean, they can hurt themselves. Or somebody can grab them and just take off. Or, her, or actually hurt someone else. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the story that I want I want to tell real quick it was that I was getting some blood work done um, at the at the the lab thing, and there were these two kids, both toddlers. Uh, I think one was probably the smaller one was less than two years old, and the older one was a little more than two years old. It seemed so they were just running around the chairs. And there were some people there, the old, some older people there, who weren't very, you know, they were kind of infirm and they're walking. And these children were just laughing and giggling and having the greatest time ever. So I looked around and what I saw was, I saw uh, two sets of adults. One was the parent of one of the children on his phone. And then there was a another group of people that seemed to be uh, a younger woman, an older woman, um, who were simply just not paying attention. And they almost knocked down this older lady. Wow. And I and, and, and I was like, you know, not to think of where are your parents? So there is that stage in parenting where it's more of a corral style of parenting. You know, you have to you have to growl them in, and um, know where they are. And you can't reason with them. You see, because we want to reason. No. Because there's there's this new age thing that we want to reason with everybody. Anybody ever try to reason with a, with, with a two year old? Year old. You try that. How's that working? They're in their own. Way. How's that working for you, YouTube? How's that working for you, Facebook? Trying to reason with a two year old. Trying to sit them down and talk to them on well, why that's not good. Does that, that, does that work? And why this is good, a little pat pat on the butt. Oh, <laughs> violence. You're putting violence. Are, are you they advocating? They understand that. Are you advocating violence? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I still believe in spanking. Well. Spanking is not abuse. If you do it the proper way, I, I think a child should be spanked every now and then. When at this, the, there's a certain age when they can they can understand a pat pat on the butt. That's not good. Don't do that. So. Well, yeah. See, see and, and and that's and when we start talking about parenting, now we have to talk about these things because there are uh, thoughts out there that said you should never spank a child. You should never in the adult should never inflict physical punishment on the child. Well, the problem becomes in that argument, for me anyway, is that it's when they don't, when they can't understand, they can barely understand language, let alone reason. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't talk to you, you know, and the two-year-old can't sit down and go, well, you know, I'm just having a bad day, Mom. You, you gave me all this sugar for breakfast, and then you brought me to this place where I'm supposed to sit quietly, you know I'm two, right? <laughs> you know I'm two. And you know all this sugar is in my little body, and you know I'm two, right? <laughs> so they can't, they can't come back at the, you know, at the adult and go that I, you know what, I, you, you let me suck on this juice box all the way over here that's half sugar, and then you expect me to sit down quietly and what, read a magazine? They're not gonna do it. It's one of those things that we have this where how much the kid understands, how much the child understands, and the expectation of the parent. And I think that a lot of times that, that kind of expectation from the parent is wrong, mislabeled. You can't uh, think a two year old is gonna sit and be patient and wait for you and while you're signing loan documents and while you're having a blood test done and I, I mean they're not gonna be perfect well they can't be there too mm -hmm. so and and I understand everybody can't put their child in daycare or everybody get a babysitter can't get a babysitter it's tough it's very tough but you've got to find a way you can't sit there and play on your phone while your child is running around in in the public you gotta 
be a parent and you have to corral corral them have them sit with you you know find take stuff that they can do have toys that they love to play with engage, that they can yes. engage them there i mean there there are things that you can do so don't tell me there's nothing that you can do that the child is running a household and then that, that children can run a household if um, their parents let them and they will <laughs> you could have a house of children of the corn if you want and you could just have one child it could be the one child of the corn children of the corn yeah, you, you people don't know. I understand that. Well, there you go. Well, if you don't get that, then you Google children of the corn. Uh, <laughs> Google it, and um, and then you'll and then when you see it, you'll go, oh yeah, yeah, I see that a lot. Um, but you could have child of the corn running running the household if the adults choose. So in at certain stages, you want it's more of a corralling style style of parenthood, making sure that the child has physical borders, not just uh, emotional or behavioral borders, but physical borders to keep them safe. And is that a problem in families where one person thinks the child should run around crazy and the other does? Is that a problem? It's a problem. How is that a problem? Because you mentioned it before. It's, it's, a, it's also a safety consideration. Mm -hmm. You know? It, you know, I, I don't know if things were ever like people say they were. I, I saw all, all the time we were monetized the past where your kid can come into a grocery store, can come into a store as big as a Walmart store and just run down an aisle so you can't see them. And we see that Constantly. all the time. All the time. And I think we we have a different view because what we is that? had uh, <laughs> because we, our child was pretty manageable and a lot of times that happens with your first child is a is an angel and then the next child is not is not <laughs> <laughs> and we happen to only have have one so I don't understand how it is to have two running around trying to, to, to corral them and all this stuff so I can't really say how difficult it is um, I know it's something that needs to be, I, know, I understand that, 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 that it may be tough, but it's definitely that something that has to be considered as a, you know, as a safety concern. And then later on, um, as the child ages, as they get into school, as they, as, as they get language skills, um, at some point, should you have practiced some of these things? Mm -hmm. It seems like you, like you would have practiced some of these some of these things, so the kid understand. So it's easier for the kid to understand when there are now rules when they can understand language, as opposed to being you know what having to do whatever they were doing before. That so there's not a big change in their life. You know, it's like oh, you know when. So it's important to have rules at home, so that when they are in the bank, they understand their boundaries and rules for them when they're especially in public um, because the world is not what milk safe no and uh, not a playground and not everywhere you take your child is a playground and 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 frankly I, I think there is a, a a new parenting style that believes that everywhere you take your child everybody needs to accept everything your child does because he's because he's just a child he's just a baby blah 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 but um, you are bringing your, your child into the environment of everybody else. And I think that you have to be respectful of everybody else's environment. You have to be respectful of their personal space and their personal belongings. And you just have to, be, you have to teach the kid to be respectful of that. Um, and that doesn't happen. You know, mm -hmm. the kid runs right up to you. Runs, you're sitting there in the bank, runs right up to you and wants to play with you. And you're like, oh, what's this? Where is your mama? No, baby, no. Go over there with the. But then we ha there's a sad part to that, Willie, because there What's, are people what part is that? people who don't know any better. They, Why is that? They, because they were not raised the way we were, or they they were not raised. Period. <laughs> <laughs> just, there are some people they just that, got older yeah they just got older <laughs> some people are just out there I didn't say that and and like we <laughs> why, some of y'all just got some of y'all just got old y'all didn't get raised y'all just got older there are people that children are not the mature corn. children of the there corn. are people that are not mature they just happen to get older 
and you all know what I'm talking about. You you work with them. You see them in the grocery stores. You see them in life, period. That people just got older. They did not mature. They don't they were not raised by a family member or anything. They and we saw that on we were again, we were watching a show together, Dr. Phil and Dr. this Phil. woman and this woman had some issues, you know, where she was drinking. She had all these kids, but she didn't take care of them. And child where the, the DCF, the, people. DCF people, you know, were going to take them away from her and give them to her daughter. Who, who was raised by her. And was... <laughs> <laughs> who was not raised by her, who grew up, who got older with her. Anyway. Who was just her daughter. Yeah. And it... We have seen um, instances here in our county, you know, in, uh, in our geographical area, in the Tampa Bay area, I'll say that, where uh, Child Protective Services gives children back to their parents and they have killed them in the last year. It's really sad, you know, but they, we can't expect Child Protective Services to do everything. I mean, that's a tough job for people. And, you know, we look at them and go, you know, why did that judge give that child back? Why did they? Because those people were at their best when they saw them. So they're doing their job as they have been trained and they know how to do. And they say, well, she seems fine. We'll give her a, child, a chance with her child again. But it's like anything else. Every, every, everybody figures out what everybody else wants to see. And is able to at some point hopefully reproduce that. The, the 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 problem is that there's no underpinning. That means there's no foundation of parenting skills and what to do when things are stressful. And things can get stressful because your two year old can stress you out. Mm -hmm. And if you have emotional and problems yourself, yourself that have not been dealt with over the edge, you don't know what to do. You have any idea what to do? Um, so this child is screaming and going, and they have emotional problems. Because <laughs> they're two. Because they are two. They don't know how to control themselves, and, and you you know, it, it gets out of hand, and they they hurt their child. Yeah, so things... It's very it, sad. It's, you know, things, things can go very, very bad. Um, you know, people make jokes about... You ought to get a light. You have to get a license to drive, and you got to get a license to get married. You should have a license to get kids, have kids. I don't believe that's necessarily so, but I think that we are in a generation where we need to start having more, more just like we do about relationships. We have to have more conversation about raising children and what it takes to do that. Like we, like we say all the time, you know, you know, getting married, or, or you know, marriage isn't for wimps. And having parenting is definitely, is definitely not, not for wimps, for wimps. because because it will rip it will rip your gut it can it can rip your guts out uh, while you're ripping your hair out your guts are being ripped out too because there are parents who do everything they're supposed to do and then their kids don't I mean and then their kids go crazy still mm -hmm. you know so there are so there's no like if you do it this way every single time it'll work there's there's none of that because you're dealing with human beings people who mm -hmm. grew up in the church and do all, all the things they're supposed to do and their kids still go wayward happens happens way too frequently um, so so we're not here to, to say that you're all doing it wrong <laughs> it's not why we're here this morning but we, but we have to start this conversation and this will probably be a multi-part conversation because as the child matures or gets older and the parent gets older uh, like, like, like I said in the beginning the um, understanding of the of, of the child and the expectations of the of the adult of the parent changes, uh, and I think a lot of times because you haven't had that conversation and you and you haven't built that relationship and boundaries, that parent and child miss mm -hmm. expectations, understanding of those expectations, uh, because and, you have and, and and that's something I personally struggle with. And I think that's what brought up this conversation with us. It did. Because I, I struggle with communicating with my, my, my adult son. I, I do. And I, I have expectations that really... Um, I expect him to, to, to think and be the way that I am when he's a different generation. 
And he's a different person. Yeah. We're we're all different people. That's why we're that's why we're not running around all in the same skin. Um, we don't all share a brain. And it would be boring if we did. And it'd be it'd, it'd be hard to run hurdles. <laughs> if we all shared a brain. Same skin. Oh. Not making fun of conjoined twins or anything, y'all, but it would be tough. I'm just saying, it would be hard if we all shared a brain. And everybody, you know, so everybody looks at things a little differently, and especially at different stages in their lives. Um, so we have to be, some, you know, with our kid. Who and, and I and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I, I I I never dog out my like like we said earlier, I never dog out my spouse in public. Uh, I never tell you negative things about, about my wife in public, and, I, and I'll never tell you negative things about my son in public either. Um, so, and I've said this publicly, if, even if he wasn't my son, I'd like him. He's a good kid. He's a good kid. I'd like he him. He is. He's funny, he's caring, he's kind, um, all that stuff. I mean, up until he was later teens, um, if you heard an ambulance, he would pray, because he kind of learned that in school. Mm -hmm. um, he saw a motorcycle accident. Yes. Remember, y'all would drive. Saw a motorcycle accident and, the, and and saw the you know the the white sheet. And from then on, has been adamant that I may not have a motorcycle <laughs> or or a Can Am. Um, just been adamant. So he so he's you know and when I was sick, you know when Debbie family had to go back to work get up in the morning and fix my breakfast and make sure I had my stuff and make sure I went on my walk. So he's very kind, very I mean he's he, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. So learn so but he but he is from a different generation. I mean, he mean he's he's kind of at the tail in the millennial cuz he was born in 90 90 in, in 1990. So he's he was at, at, at the in the front of that more generation X I guess. Um so what he sees, how he sees situation is, is is different. Just like I saw things differently than my parents, um, and 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 with him, he's he's very much um, literal. The very literal dude. He is so literal. It's like so you got to use and with and with Alex, you got to use the right words. You can't just say, "Well, you know what I mean." No, because no, that's not what you said. And I don't know. I think that's probably that's probably my fault. Uh, uh, you think so? Yes, I think it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like that. I'm because I'm. You gotta use the right yeah. words. You gotta because because now I if you use, use the right words, I, I'll know exactly what you're saying, and then I'll be able to give you exactly what you want. So you have to use the right words. I, you, you can't just give me some general idea and then let me roll with it and then be mad because I didn't roll with it in the same way that <laughs> you would have rolled with it. And now you're mad at me. Example. Do the dishes. So I did dishes. I didn't, I didn't wipe off counters. I didn't wipe off the stove. Uh, I, didn't, microwave. I didn't wipe off the microwave. I didn't sweep the floor. Because and, and when and, and when I, I was growing up, and I tell them this all the time, when I was growing up, my, it was my job to, to do the dishes in the kitchen. So you did the dishes, you cleaned the counter, you cleaned the stove, we didn't have microwave back then, but you cleaned all of that, and you swept and mopped the kitchen. That was the that whole was, deal. That was cleaning. doing the dishes. Yes. So you can see... How, the, how, how it's easy that those things don't necessarily go together in every, everybody's brain because, frankly, they don't, they don't all go together in my brain. Um, I, would use, I would just use a different phrase. And that's the deal. I would just use a different phrase. To, but the point of the conversation is that you have to know your kid. And you have to be able to communicate with them in a way that they understand because then they can be successful. Now, now we're moving into how to deal with teenagers other than sending away to military school <laughs> and I know that the teenagers can and I just feel like I have teenagers it can be tough I taught for 15.1 years your kids teenagers middle school and that'll be a thumbnail and that'll be bad 
but <laughs> the idea is that it it it, it can be. It can be. It can be tough. It can be you know. It can be stressful, um, but part of of the success of dealing with teenagers, especially, is to you you have to sort of try to understand where they are, and you have to be able to communicate with them at a level that they get. And as they're developing personalities, as they're developing ways about them, they I mean they came from your body. But they're still not attached. You know what I'm saying? They, their brains develop and they turn into their own little human beings who think about things differently, who have different perspectives or whatever. They react to things differently. And they react to things differently than, than, than you might have or thought you might have as a child. I'll, I think oftentimes we romanticize about how, how lovely and obedient that we all were when, quite frankly, we, we may or may not have been all the time. Uh, I know I wasn't a perfect child, but my dad thought I was. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But the, the, that was some of the reason why I, did. I, they thought I was to have boys. They thought I was perfect too. Girls. <laughs> my mom I was. thought my, Her mom perfect. thought that I was just, I hung the moon, that I was just lovely. Because I was. Um, but I think it's important that um, that you understand, that you take the time, and I think that sometimes we want to use our adult muscle because we're the parents. And and, and and yes, I can see. Yes, you have a place for them to live. You put food on the table. You you put gas in their car. You do all that stuff. Yes, yes. And and in your brain, and in the adult brain, sometimes um, we are under the impression that that should be enough for them to understand that they are supposed to do something to repay that in return in return we think that but we go we go there in our brain first so when we because we haven't had that conversation we just make that assumption and remember I, talk, I keep talking about and I will keep talking about the expectations and then the understanding most relationships have trouble when there's an unmet expectation doesn't matter what kind of relationship whether it's, whether it's a parent-child relationship, whether it is an adult relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship or a business relationship, when there is an unmet expectation, then that's when you start to have problems in a relationship. Um, so in order to keep that from happening, expectations have to be be talked about beforehand. Communication. Got to talk about it beforehand. Uh, in any relationship, it's it's so important to have communication. You gotta communicate what you're feeling. The person doesn't know that you're angry because they can't read your mind. No, and I have problems with that. Which is why I'm here. <laughs> yes. Which is why I'm here, uh, because as and I and I think it's really because I I, I spent so much time dealing with your children. And I learned there that is that you want to be fair to all the children, but you can't treat all children the same because they're all that goes in management. Because well. they're all different. You can't treat every people that get in supervisor and management. I want to be fair and treat everybody the same. You can't treat. You can't even treat all the kids. The kids in your, people. You can't treat all the kids in your house the same. People mm -hmm. who and, and, and people and y'all who have more than one one child know that you can't treat all your children the same. You can't. No. Because, again, they're not sharing the same brain, and they're not the same people. So, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. We're, yeah, I see. I'm, look, I'm looking at that, 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 too. My wife's directing. She's back there directing. She's doing signals. <laughs> slide! Slide! <laughs> Uh, they're gonna throw a pass. They're gonna throw a pass. <laughs> not a good football weekend for the How about those Buccaneers? Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Seminoles, not so much. But they're still my team. I still love you. Willie, Seminoles, you, get, you gotta Willie, find somebody who can block. Willie Taggart, you gotta get it together. You gotta find somebody who can block. Anybody. There's gotta be somebody on campus who's on the block. Anybody. Just so go, go to the student union and start, hey, you're big. Get your ass over here. <laughs> Put this helmet on. Perfect. Yeah, my, the something. Seminoles got you. Gotta get something. Yeah. I realize he's just getting you there. You can't lose it. You, you, you can't lose. You can't can't lose to Syracuse. You can't lose. 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 You can't lose
can't get just getting there. Can't get He's gotta out. get things together. So this is the first we both love football. We're gonna talk about football every now and football. then. Football. Not soccer. Not soccer. But nobody watches that crap. People like soccer. <laughs> yeah, nobody nobody watches nobody that crap. Nobody here in our house. No nope, nobody watches that crap. So but anyway, so having you know what, being able to communicate um, with your with your children is extremely important and and treating and, and finding out what what motivates them what pushes them and it isn't the same and you and again those of you who have have more than one kid know that your your kids aren't the same one kid will crumble and be a mess for a stern look that was me when I was born. The other one, you have to take out back and beat them with, uh, he had to beat them with a two by four to get their attention. <laughs> My brother here. <laughs> <laughs> Just a look. And, and we could be in church, and my, and I'm with my friends, and we're doing blah, 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 blah. And my mom up in the corner, she looks at me, and I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, so again, <laughs> even your children, children are, are different. I, and I think, it, I, I think that if you're interested in, 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 in relationships with your children and being, and being an effective parent from, especially when they can understand until their adulthood, that I think it's incumbent upon on parents to understand what moves their, you know, what moves their kid, um, just just like you do with anybody else. And before we um, before we get going, because we're we're at, we're sort of at our limit here. Um, it's okay to be polite to your children, and this is this is something that I see all the time. Un unfortunately, in our, in our you know what where we live, I see the way that some people talk to their children. Don't don't. They curse. They curse. They curse at their children. They they degrade them. They say terrible things about them. You so stupid in public, out loud. You so stupid. Why are you being stupid? And then they and then every filth and foul and foul and filth thing comes out of their mouth at their child. And I want to. I'm gonna do it one day, so y'all may read about it in the paper. <laughs> I want to say, don't talk to him like that. Mm -hmm. This child's gonna have enough struggles in his life. Especially being a black male in America without his mama cussing him out when he's four. Mm -hmm. Hearing those things about himself early will shape who they think they are. It's hard, isn't it? In your frustration. But, but it goes back to the people who do that weren't raised. They just grew up. Mm -hmm. They just got older. So you can't put into your child what you never received. So you can only now, put. It's tough. It's tough it for is. people who have, have you know, they they have kids, but they were never parented themselves. So you got to learn to be a parent when you had no example. So it, it's tough. It is hard, you know, and and and, 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 and we're not being judgmental in that sense, but but that's but the things that we, you know that you notice and you go. Oh, if someone could sit down and talk to you for the for two or three days about how you address your children. Um, but then, a lot of times, like that woman on that show last night, they get defensive, so you can't help them. Some because people, then, oh, you think you're better than me. You think you know more. You blah, 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 blah. And, and so they can't get the help that they need because they're, they have all of this. But that's all because of the very same reason that they weren't parented. Um, so they are, they just got older. So they don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to take criticism. They don't know how to listen and, and get the help that they know they need. And unfortunately, that becomes a problem in the workforce, in their marriages, when they do get married. Everything. when it, it becomes a barrier in everything in your life. You see a lot of people that can't keep jobs, who, you know, because they don't know. And and I know this is going to hit some people, but all of that stuff with police and young black men and all that stuff, that's some of the problem. They don't know how to respect authority. Kids grow up with... Police them. don't have the right to hurt us. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that every police is good and all this stuff like that. But if you know how to behave and know how to respect the law... You wouldn't have a problem. You're going to be a lot. You're going to be a lot safer if you understand 
that there are boundaries and no you don't you don't just get to do anything you want no you just you don't get to say anything you want to anybody you want to um and there is and i've talked about it in my other stuff that there's a hyper hyper emotionality in boys uh, that gets them in trouble um that look that says you disrespected me so are you wearing the wrong color shirt here so there's violence um and the first person of authority that, that the child has to deal with is a parent. That's the first set of boundaries. From the little kid being corralled, the physical um, boundaries of, of being corralled, to later on being told that we're, we're going into this doctor's office. I need, you to sit, I need you to sit in this chair, and I don't need you to run around. I need you to do that for me. And, and and have the kid respect those boundaries and respect those and respect the mom or the dad or whomever. Um, that little step of teaching boundaries could save their life one day. May save their lives. So it, and and it seems far away. And and like, and like mm -hmm. Deb said, we're not excusing bad law enforcement officers. We support law enforcement, but we're not we're not excluding bad law enforcement. Because there are bad, there's bad officers out yeah, there. Yeah, that they're, 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 just target people because they are black or they are brown and or they're or are they're so maltrained that they should have never had the job to to begin with because mm -hmm. they can't handle the stress and. They got out there and they were afraid or whatever. Um, I mean, there's all this, there's a myriad of situations where there's bad law enforcement and they make mistakes and uh, people get hurt. Um, yes, no one's denying any. No one's denying any of that. But we, as a person, need to respect authority also. And and I and, and what we found is that, for the most part, if you can do that, you can go home. Mm-hmm. You get to go home, the police no, officer gets to go, go home. home, everybody is happy. It's a win. Double prizes. Now, we went all the way over and started oh. dipping and doing, but... But that's okay. We're, <laughs> from, we're, we're from preaching to meddling. But, but, it all go, but, but it all actually backs up into how people were raised. Hmm? Or if they were raised at all. How the police officer was raised. And how that child, that that young man, was raised. It all it all goes, it goes back. back to the same. So that's mm -hmm. why it's a tough gig, but you got to do it. You can't let television. You can't let pop culture. Um, you can't let rap music. You can't let um, Beyonce and Jay Z. You can't let other people raise your kid. One of the, and we're, we're going to go because we're going a little longer than than, yes. than normal. And we're getting to be that time when we have to get out here. Mm -hmm. um, John Jernigan, when I was working at, um, at, at Bloomingdale as a uh, assistant director, um, he had two kids in the band, both really good kids, and he and Dee were super parents. And this is before uh, we had Alex. And I asked John, "How do you have such good kids? What do you, what do you do? You what do you do?" And, and, and he sat down with me and he said, "I got to tell you some things." And he said, the first thing is, do not let other people raise your children. He says, I know you and your wife both have to work, but do not let the daycare raise your child. Do not let television raise your child. Do not let pop culture raise your child. Uh, do, not, do not let the experts raise your child. You have to raise your child. Um, don't let your friends raise your children. Because... You know what, sometimes, he says, sometimes, Willie, you, you're going to have to be the mean dad. If if it's not going to be cute when they're five, it's not cute when they're two. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'll, I'll never forget that. And um, he said, because some of the things that people allow their children to do are going to get them killed. And he said, every day in America, somebody gets a knock on their door in the middle of the night, and then they get, and they get asked to come identify the body. Every night that happens in somebody's household. A life-changing event. And I have never forgotten that. And it's because that they thought that they couldn't raise their kid. They thought that they didn't know how. They thought that, that everything was cool because they were the cool parent and blah, 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 blah. You your have, child is not your friend. Your child is your, you know, you can, be, you can be friendly with your child and you should. But they'll, they'll make their own friend. They don't need you as a friend, but because that's a pop culture thing, you need mm -hmm. to be you need to be friends with your children. No, you don't. Don't. They have their own friends. 
or should, if you're, if you're doing your parenting thing right, they'll have their own friends. Um, so I, you know, I took I took those words and those words, you know, struck like thunder in my spirit for for for, for years and years. That that's how you, that's how you're gonna have to do it. And we're not saying that that's easy to do. It's tough. It's hard. It's very hard. But you know what? And we're still learning. And we're still learning. Be that's part two. Being a parent to an adult child. And that can, you know what, and, and, and again, because how every, however everybody got there is a myriad of reasons and, 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 and a bunch of scenarios how, how, how that got there. And you're right. So that changes, you know what, that, those dynamics change too. Um, that's why we're going to talk about parenting more than once. This isn't the end-all video about how to parent. So, so don't take your pencil, put your pencil away. And uh, we didn't have the top ten of you do these things and your kid will turn out okay. But it's an on, but I think it needs to be an ongoing conversation. Yes. So it'll be an ongoing conversation. Okay. Am I going to finish? Yes. Okay, that's my this show. This is your show. No, it's not my show. <laughs> it's something else. This is not my show. Um, this is this is her show. It's not my show. But the idea is is that again, parenting is the second most important job you do. So and if you're and if you're struggling, get some help. Yeah. Don't feel like you're weak. Um, By asking for help. Ask for some help. Yes. And if, if, if DCF has to come to your home, and you don't put on a front for those people, because they can get you help. If you're hurting, let them know that you're hurting. If you've got substance abuse problems, let them know. Let people know that you're hurting. I, you know, you think that they're the enemy, but they're coming in to try to find a solution for your home. And if they, you know, if ha getting counseling for you and, and helping you to learn how to be a good parent is going to help, it's going to keep you from hurting your child. Or if you need drug treatment or al uh, if you have alcohol problems or if you have addiction problems, yeah, get that fixed. You know what, get somebody, get someone to help you. Don't, don't suffer silently. Don't be like, don't end up like this woman who, who walked her child into the Hillsborough into the Hillsborough River, River. walked dropped it and there. dropped their ch her child her little girl into the Hillsborough River and she and walked away. As horrible as that is, what kind of condition was she in to think that that was the solution to her problem? Don't be that person. Get help. If you're struggling, let some let somebody know. All right, we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So until we see you again, go out there and learn, learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. Yes. We will see you when we see you. Watch, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe. Subscribe. Share. Because now we got to get to 100. 100. 100. Um, that, that's spelled H-U-N-D-100. 100. 100. <laughs> 100. So we need to Thank get to 100. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Love we'll, you. We'll see you when we see you. Peace. Peace. And click the button, the button, button, button. There you go. And oh, oh Jason Algar's birthday today. Huh? It's Jason Algar's birthday today. What was that? Um, became a citizen today. Jason Algar is the um, chair of FBA District 7.